Welcome back to Cannabis in Canada. It's Tuesday, August 11th, 2015, and we're breaking it live as we always do. We'll do this whenever we need to and bring it with a live stream when there's a breaking issue such as uh, baby MJ. Now, this is something that Cannabis in Canada has not wanted to touch on. Uh, when I talk about this, we're going to be getting into details with the parents and a recent legal de decision that happened here uh, today in, re in respect to this. At the same time, I'd like it noted that um, this has been an ongoing story and, and people have heard chatter about it in the background and certain activists and advocates have been working on it but not talking about it because of the nature of, of, uh, of the fact there is a baby and the ministry and other people involved. So we're happy to say we're able to now report on it now that there's been legal precedent set, a lawyer's been involved, doctors have been involved, and adequate advocates have been involved. Um, with that being said, I'd like to welcome Mr. Justin um, Pierce to the show. Thank you. Welcome, Justin. Good to be here. Now, Justin, you're the father of baby MJ. Yes, I am. Okay. Um, before, sorry, Justin. Um, sorry, Cheryl. I'd like to also welcome your advocate, which is Cheryl, um, Cheryl T. Rose from Haley's Foundation. Hi, right, welcome, Cheryl. I'm good. Uh, Cheryl, Cheryl's been on the show before, and uh, Cheryl, of course, uh, jumped on this. Uh, the coalition jumped on this, and, and really, she she jumped on in the last 48 hours and really kind of came in and, and really wanted to help out as well with other amazing activists that we'll get into. But let's start with this. To bring the audience up to speed, what exactly uh, happened here? Let's start with uh, what baby MJ suffers from. Uh, well, she suffers from seizures, from brain injury. She had meningitis, and it caused swelling in the brain. And the brain swelling was crashing against the skull, and seizures started happening uh, up to 100 a day. And we had to fight with the hospital for a bit, but then we initially suggested the CBD oil. First, they were kind of unsure about it, and then a few of the doctors knew about it, and they were more open to trying it. And then we got approval from the hospital administration to do a trial dose. And if the trial dose went good, we can continue the medication. So the ho this is Vancouver General Hospital or Children's? Uh, Children's Hospital. They, they approved the use of CBD yes. oil. That's amazing. So again, that's when we... The hospital administrator of Children's Hospital approved it. That's amazing. Um, now, just so we have a little bit of background here now, so it is Children's Hospital. How many seizures a day um, on conventional therapy was baby MJ having at the time that you went before you explored the CBD oil? 60 to 100 seizures a day. Okay, and how many after the after you actually started the... Now, that means conventional therapy obviously was failing, and when the CBD oil was implemented, um, you know, what the seizures I were would, I would probably say around five seizures a day. Really? So this ties in a lot to, I keep saying this, Dr. Sanjay Gupta weeds one, two, or three. Look at this because it's the Surgeon's General nominee for America. You can't get anybody any bigger. And for, you know, our health minister can say she's outraged and there's no medical value, etc. Dr. Sanjay Gupta would argue it doesn't matter who says what. He has a 180 degree turnaround because he's demonstrated on video exactly what you know, Justice talked about here tonight. And, uh, and that's the ability to reduce these seizures, extend a child's life, and, um, and we're going to get into this a little more. I don't want to rant about this because it, it goes right to the heart of, uh, of all of us, our parents here. And uh, it goes to the heart of, of that particular issue. Now, both your wife uh, and yourself also suffer from seizures. Yes, we do. Okay. So, Michelle and yourself, through, through your own experimentation with CBD, is that what led you to understand how to treat your baby? Oh, definitely. I would definitely say so. Okay. Now, um, so you control your seizures, and now baby MJ is being able to be controlled down to five seizures a day. What have the doctors said, aside from saying it's okay, are they monitoring this closely, and, and what's their opinion kind of right now moving forward? What's their opinion to you, you know, to help your child tonight? Well, my opinion is that the, the doctors are liking the results. Obviously, as it, as, like they said, if it's, the child dose didn't work, they wouldn't continue it. They're definitely noticing improvements, which is pretty good. Uh, one of the doctors was 
in my opinion, a little moved by the progress and wasn't so sure that withdrawing life support was such a good idea. And then it became two doctors and three doctors and four doctors and they just started kind of piling up. Now this is, this is, the, this is what goes down to the heart of the story um, and uh, the Ministry of Children and Family. Now they decided to get involved and they decided to make an issue not so much of the fact that you were looking at oil but more to make an issue of yourself and your wife and basically to justify their actions in trying to seize custodial control. Um, oh, of the situation. For sure. Okay. So maybe tell us exactly what the ministry did. How did they engage you, you know, at the point that you were trying to help your child in the hospital? You know, at what point did they become engaged? Well, I think, in my opinion, they became engaged at the point when she was younger and she had previous brain injury, very mild, couple brain bleeds, and there was. Uh, expected to be cerebral palsy and they were they were worried that she had to be pulled off life support because she had a severe infection and so and she was very very small she was closer to 1.4 pounds to maybe two pounds at that point and they thought too fragile so she ended up pulling through that and they were not really happy with us trying to constantly fight against not wanting to go against life support and not wanting to to have their services right well without a doubt I mean I know that um, my concern is when the ministry came in and tried to take custodial control and maybe I should direct some of this maybe over to Cheryl um, Cheryl when you got involved with the and you found out where the ministry's position was was the ministry's position to have custodial control and actually take this child off life support? 100%. So that was... That yeah, was... that they want um, custodial, total custodial, and to take her off. That was what they wanted to do, was to take her off uh, life support and send her with her uh, parent, like, to send her to hospice, to a hospice facility, and that they, they were not allowing the parents any say they were just that was what they were going to do and the parents they're the parents you can't just decide that you're going to take someone's child off life support so uh, that's where they got the lawyer and uh, with the coalition's help and got the lawyer and they went to court this morning and um, they the judge uh, basically stated and it has decided that the director of the social services is not able to from from my understanding is not able to change um, anything for MJ uh, as as far as taking her off life support the only thing that uh, from my understanding that they can do is if she needs more life support services they can provide that but not and nothing more until it will be going to court and to trial. And, and to our audience, this comes down to that fundamental right to autonomy. Now as a parent, it extends to your child until your child's of age. So right now what Justin's doing is extending his right to autonomy for his child, including his wife Michelle. And thank God the justice has stepped in and once again said, no, the state, being the Ministry of Children and Family or the provincial authorities, cannot intervene in that right to autonomy, that parental right to autonomy, provided that Justin's not endangering his child. And I would argue that clearly, if you can reduce seizures from 100 down to five, that's far from harm. And I, you know, I'm glad that that wasn't the issue that the ministry took up. It seems very, very, uh, very odd. Um, now, your your lawyer was, I believe, it's Hit, Hitrich Law Firm. Law Firm. Yes, that's correct. Okay, and his name was Jack Hilbridge. Hilbridge. Yes, Hitrich. Right? Hitrich. Now, Jack Hitrich. I mean, look this lawyer up, and we're going to try and get uh, links and stuff to this for the, the about section after this. But uh, this lawyer was amazing. We got him yesterday. Uh, thank Devon Millen, uh, an, an activist of ours out of Alberta, that was on this and really being active and, and soliciting a lot of attorneys and another member of the coalition, a National Steering Committee representative, that really busted their butt, which just shows the National Collective that really went behind this and got that lawyer to step up. And uh, the legal aid stuff wasn't the issue. It was like, no, there's an ethical issue at hand here. There's a baby. There's a right to the parents, a right to autonomy, and the parental right to consent. And the ministry simply cannot come in and intervene in these issues. 
and I'm, I'm really glad that what has happened has. And I'm, I'm opening this up to the audience, ask questions, because up until now, we didn't want to report on this. Now is your chance to ask, because this is your chance to educate. Talk to other parents. See how this was done. See what collectives can do. Because honestly, it's on you for your right to autonomy and to look after your child, not on the state or the hospital to tell you how to look after your child. So, uh, okay, my, uh, my understanding is we've got uh, Chad Jacket patched in to come on to Skype. Skype. That is my co-host for the show here. Chad, welcome to the show. Hey, Jason. How you doing, buddy? Good. I'm just uh, doing my best to keep my emotions in check, and uh, I appreciate you coming on. For the audience, just Chad was running a little bit late there, and, uh, and, and with this was a breaking story. So, to be fair, this is uh, all of us kind of scrambled to get here and make this happen tonight. But uh, Chad, this is very similar to the baby Aiden. Uh, we went through this on the East Coast. We went to Ottawa and, uh, and seen Marco and his dad. And of course, that was influenced by Rick Simpson. In this case, we have Justin and Michelle, who both suffer from seizures, our parents, and their child suffers from seizures. And through their own experience with CBD oil and controlling their own seizures, they implemented that with their child and brought seizures from 100 down to just five. Now, uh, with that said, the ministry tried to take hold of this child and actually were going to force baby MJ off of life support and leave baby MJ to basically die, which is where the coalition intervened and, uh, and got some lawyers as fast as we could to, to try and help out and, and thank God for that. Today, in essence, in, it was overturned that, again, that parental consent cannot be done in relation to um, you know, terminal uh, situations, in relation to hospice. Uh, they cannot make that call, only the, the parent can and uh, custodial rights in that regard went back to Justin and Michelle and uh, that'll hopefully bring you up to speed a bit. What's your thoughts there on, on some of that? I know you've been trying to get up to speed here on it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Jay, how I feel about all that kind of stuff, it's, it's ridiculous. Um, I'm, I'm saddened about uh, to live in this country with ty these types of things going on where they're trying to take people's kids away from them simply for trying to help them with a natural plant uh it saddens me that this is this is the state of affairs that you know this is the the, the country we're, that we're living in right now and this is where we are so mm -hmm. um i'm really happy to hear that uh, that lawyer stepped up and got the injunction for them um and uh and you know it, it shouldn't even be some be something that has to happen you know you shouldn't have to even get a lawyer involved simply because you want to help your child, you know. Um, you know, people should have more compassion. The hospitals are pathetic, really, in this country. Um, I'm seeing it every day because I've been visiting my dad a lot in the hospital these days. So, uh, yeah, it's sad. We can do a lot better. Well, sad for our, our people here. I think one good thing that we can say here is that Justin and his wife, through their own stance and through the advocate's help, um, showed a good example of where justice and the parental right still exists here in this country, and nothing supersedes that right to autonomy. And, um, and Justin was well within his rights in treating his baby, and will continue to do so. And we have some really dramatic footage where you can actually see uh, baby MJ using cannabis, you know, through a swab and getting the oils needed to prevent those seizures. Now this is very powerful, compelling stuff that we're bringing. And we're not saying go out and just give this to your child as the first option. We're saying do your homework and look at what's going on. And I point once again to Dr. Sanjay Gupta. Anybody want to challenge that doctor, go ahead. You'll look as silly as anybody else attempted well, it's to. It's pretty funny, you know, they, 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 people don't, don't want to use cannabis as their first option, but they'll run to chemotherapy and radiation. You know, we all know that radiation causes cancer. You know, um, chemotherapy is is just a, a nasty chemical that, you know, if you took a high dose of it, it'd kill you on the spot. You know, it, it's they're deadly poisons and and radiation is a, a, basically another deadly poison, you know, it, and people think that it's that should be your first option. And if it doesn't work, well, maybe we should try a natural plant. It's, it's backwards. It's so backwards and it's, it's ridiculous. But. Yeah, well, in, in this case, it's the seizure treatments and, and again, uh, conventional treatments when the child's still suffering at 100 seizures a day, you know, and the parents try oils and reduce it to five seizures a day. No doctor or state authority should intervene at a time when they say nothing else works. And I'm interested to know what, what, what were they trying to keep the, the seizures off with? What, what 
chemicals were they concocting to put into this poor little baby before somebody tried to give him give her cannabis? One sec, here Cheryl can answer that. I'll, I'll answer that. Um, if multiple seizure medications, uh, very the uh, phenotin. Um, there was sorry, sorry, can you, sorry, can you phenot phenotin. Uh, there was. Uh, there's lorazepam, there is also uh, topiramate, uh, levecatrim, which I believe is also known as Kepra. There's about four, she's on about four, maybe even five. I would have to look at uh, the list as well as the CBD oil uh, as medications. Other than that, I believe she's only on an antibiotic. Right. Other than the seizure meds. So. Now, I don't know all those medications off the top of my head, but They're I'm sure if I strong. look them up, I'm going to find a, a very extensive list of side effects that go with all of those. Uh -huh. Am exactly. I right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. There yeah. is. There yeah. is. And this is what I mean by all conventional therapies failed, and unfortunately, they're still going to pump this baby full of conventional therapies knowing that they don't work while they continue to use cannabis and show that it does work. And hopefully this will be eye-openers, one to other parents, but also to continue to educate the medical establishment and to show the wows and wonders of cannabis. And that doesn't need to be governed like a gun. Um, Justin, let's, let's, let's point this back over to you now. As a father, and you've stood up for your child's right, and the justice system just said, what you've done is perfectly sound and 100% within your parental rights. How do you feel about that today? It must give you some, some sort of uh, um, vindication as a father. Oh, I feel really good that... I, I knew I could stand up for my rights and say this doesn't seem right. You can't just make last second calls like that and just not ask me if I want to make a decision about it. Try to thwart a way to get out of not having an appeal. And then when I do book the appeal, they try to, th I think, in my opinion, they weren't so impressed with it. Well, I'm sure they're not going to be impressed now. I'm sure they're going to want to scrutinize this video and other stuff that you do. They cannot be impressed all they want. At the end of the day, they got their hands slapped today because you were right, and the lawyers proved that. And the justice has stepped in and said, no, there's an issue when the state steps in and tries to prevent you from treating that child. And, and this is a huge issue, once again, for Canada. And for Chad and I, who had to report on this on the East Coast, again, with baby Aiden, it broke our heart because in that case, the state already got the child. And it was so much harder. In this case, they didn't have me yet. So it was like, get the lawyer, do something before they fully get, you know, in between the parents. They were able to split the parents up in that case. In this case, your wife and yourself are very strong. Your wife's here today. And, uh, you know, I, hats off to you guys. I can't say enough about that. Um, Chad, you got any, uh, any feeding there? We're going to go to commercial break here soon, and we'll, uh, we'll come in for the second half. As well as to the audience, please hit us with any questions. You know, anything you want to ask out there, any feedback. We're here for you guys, and we're here to, to make awareness around this particular issue as the blogs and mainstream media pounce on this in the next 48 hours. Um, uh, sorry, Jay, my Skype shut down on me te temporarily. Can you see me? Yep. Hey, okay. There we go. Um, uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I just got to say hats off to everybody that is, you know, out there fighting and putting your putting yourself out there to to bring the awareness and to to stop, you know, the atrocities that are happening to children all over the place in this country. Um, so thank you guys for uh, stepping up and you know and you know doing this and standing out and 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 you know taking that that charge. It's it's needed and thank you very much for doing it. Obviously, you do it for your your child anyway. But it, it's a it's a it's a big thing for everybody else. You know, we need to make an example of what these, the government is doing to people and show people. And you know, if people like yourself just don't stand up, nobody's ever going to know. So thank you for that. Well You're said. Welcome. Okay. On that note, we're going to actually head off to commercial break. And uh, please check out our videos on on uh, Baby Aiden. Continue to watch what's going on here. And of course, um, let your friends know what's going on because anytime a parent stands up and stops any ministry any governing power again i don't like ministry i don't like child protective services because i feel they're too overbearing and having to fight them off myself in my own life i don't like to see this kind of stuff and i love it when justice steps in and exercises once again that parental right to autonomy on that note we'll see you when we get back with a little more detail about exactly how this breaks down and get some questions from the audience we'll see you then
I won't give up on you. I promise. Cement time. See that? So took the whole thing right off.
Welcome back to Cannabis in Canada. Uh, that was a good commercial break. We had a chance to, uh, to medicate and actually talk a little more just about what's underneath all this. It's one thing to bring you the information and say this is what to do. In all reality, these are very high stress, high impact situations and it's extremely stressful on the family. There's a lot of what ifs and unknowns and some of that's what we're going to talk to here <coughs> or talk about here in the second half. Most importantly, let's start off with one of the questions from the audience. Now, what would you both suggest? Let's, let me start with Justin. If, uh, if a parent out there runs into this situation, what's the first thing that that parent should do? I would say get a lawyer. That's probably your, your best bet. You want to get somebody that's going to advise you with the best decisions to make. And don't jump to any decisions, no matter how minor they are, until you have a lawyer to help you. Excellent. Now we also we ran the ba the video of the baby, um, the baby MJ actually uh, medicating if you have it using oil and and the after effects of course is, is the fact that the baby reduces seizures. You see the twitching stop. Very similar to MS patients and others who've uh, experienced this and demonstrated this. Um, and Mr. Sanjay Gupta once again look up weeds one two or three and you'll understand what I'm talking about. Stopping seizures stops brain smash stops you know basically going brain dead. Um, and that, at the end of the day, comes down to the issue of, of autonomy, the issue of cannabinoids, the lack of experience by the doctor's own admission. And at the same time, here you got a doctor's permission. Now, your doctor is um, Dr. Williams. Now, yes. Dr. Williams is a supporting cannabinoid doctor, which yes. is, I find really cool for BC. And I think that that's a big message to the other parents out there and patient advocates, um, patient providers that want to know where to point parents. Point them to this kind of uh, this kind of situation. Uh, maybe Cheryl fill us in on that part as well, and then we'll switch over to Chad. Um, yeah, I found actually the the staff was actually very supportive of the CBD uh, being given to the baby. It, her particular uh, oil is a high CBD, uh, no THC, very very low uh, THC one, and it's done. Um, with the, in an MCT oil, uh, many parents with children with seizures will understand what that is with the lipids and that and how it works so well in their bodies. It's also very common on the ketogenic diet and stuff. Uh, there, right now, um, as you saw, she uh, was having it applied with a uh, with a uh, Q-tip, uh, one of the swabs. And but now she is also getting it through her end tube, and it's. I actually, uh, I'm very happy to say I I got to witness it. And when um, Justin took me in, I saw this beautiful little baby, and she was having some twitches, and you could even see in her neck the like uh, the the muscle twitch and the force of it and within five to ten minutes of Justin administering the the CBD to her we little MJ she the neck twitch that wasn't there anymore and uh, the seizure strength the the twitching in that way was much more subsided you could tell she was much more relaxed after that and doing well. They, they've been pretty good about it. Um, I was speaking with them about things like uh, different kinds of tests because there isn't a lot of knowledge even though doctors really want to know a lot um, and they actually are very willing to, to and receptive to any knowledge about working with CBD and children. So we've suggested different testing of her medications, which they didn't know because when you're using different uh, pharmaceutical uh, anti-seizure 
medications and you use CBD, their levels can actually elevate and we actually test that with Haley. And so it's very important to us because uh, MJ is on clinical levels of medication um, that are quite high. It's important that they do all these tests, make watch for toxicity as well. So, But they are very supportive of it and it's really nice to see that at BC Children's Hospital in the NICU is really you know, they're very compassionate in that way and understanding and knowing that there is science out there behind it and they're willing to, yeah. to do it. We have a question from the audience. Sorry, Chad, I'll, I'll field it over to you. So I have a question from the audience and I think I'll field this one. <clears throat> People want to know how did the coalition or what was the cannabis rights uh, involvement in this? I can tell you now we were working in the background all along. Uh, we have national representatives across this country who are on top of this and, you know, again, not bringing it to the surface because we don't need to chat or rant about what we're doing. Instead, we got Justin the help that he needed. And through advocates, Cheryl's also a member of the coalition, has been working with us for a very long time. And our network expands down to Vaughn Millen that helped very much out of Alberta, Coalition National Rep. So how did the coalition get involved? Exactly like that. It was our collective spirit, our collective nature that took this as a priority and did something within 48 hours to stop basically the death of a child. And I'm proud to say that for this collective. I'll let Justin speak to it now. I just want to... Sorry, Chad. I just want to ask a question. Um, so, uh, bef before the, the lawyer came into play here, were you guys able to work with the hospital to administer the CBD? Oh yeah, no problem. They, didn't, they never had a problem with it whatsoever. They were totally on board, except for the very beginning when we had to argue and then we got the hospital administrator to say that she approved the neurologist approved and they said go right ahead and do a trial dose trial dose doesn't work then we have to discontinue so the trial dose was very successful and obviously the oil is a regular part of our day now and going back to that question from the audience, there's also Coalition Representative Josh Ecker that also worked on this case directly, and there's also Coalition Representative Jen Bennett that helped out on this particular case. And uh, maybe we should just, how did the Coalition get involved in your matter, Justin? At what point? Oh boy, this was, this was pretty quick. Jen, Jen got involved pretty quickly. She, she heard that we got the approval for the oil and that it was getting pretty bad and that's why we got the approval and she realized that her oil had too much THC so she went to Josh and Jerry Martin and the coalition just pretty much jumped in and they were really quick to respond they made sure that we got the necessary medication in time to make sure that MJ had proper dosing of medication and made sure that we had the legal the legal prospects of it to make sure that we had a backup plan when they tried to take her off life support. Absolutely. And that's important. Um, you know, it wasn't something that you won't see us talking on Facebook about or chattering about because it's so sensitive. It's about a child. So real advocates, you know, and real activists act and we do it in the proper manner. And we're proud to say in this case we did. It's not about going and, and putting it out in the spotlight until it's applicable to do so. In this case, the law is spoken and Justin has his rights and uh, so does baby MJ. And those rights are being exercised in accordance with the hospital policy, which I'm also happy to say is allowing cannabis use. We see many other people are being blocked from being able to use cannabis in the, in the hospital, but in palliative situations like this, there should be nobody interfering in your right to autonomy, putting your body whatever you want or in your child's body whatever you want, provided you're not hurting yourself or somebody else in the process or your child. On that note, uh, Chad, uh, anything you want to fill in here? I just wanted to, to make sure we clarify there because there's people asking what was our involvement in this. And uh, once again, we, it's, we're involved in a lot of different things across the country. Chad, what would you have to say more on... Uh, on, on really just, you know, there's a lot of stress in the situations. We've seen this with Marco and with, uh, with, with his family back east and with the baby Aiden situation, a huge high stress situation. What would be your advice here? And then we'll move, we'll just move down the line here. What would be your advice, Chad, to, uh, to parents when they come upon this situation and they, they need to know what to do? Who do they call? It's like, you know, what do you do when you see a ghost? Well, you call Ghostbusters. What do you do here? when you really run into a problem with the ministry in any respective province? Well, um, you know, I guess you get a hold of a lawyer. Like these, 
these uh, these guys did, right? So it'd probably be the, the the best thing to do right away to protect yourself and know that you know you got somebody else watching your back on all these things and and you're not getting sort of set up in in some kind of a you know a situation um, where the hospital is going to make you look like the bad person somehow. Um, yeah, I, I think they they did it right. I think you know contacting the coalition and uh, getting it out there, getting this, the message out there to people so that people know that this is going on is very important. Um, aside from that, all I can say is prayer, you know. People really need to, uh, in these times, really dig in deep and, and pray. I was going to say, a lot of emotional, a lot of the guys I was saying here when we came into this, this part of the, 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 the show, a lot of emotional stress. Any parent that's been through a custody battle or anything with their kid, I mean, it is a lot of stress just to have a sick child, let alone somebody trying to tell you how to deal with it. Now, Justin, um, having gone through this, I mean, as I said, it's a bit of a victory today. Um, do you feel like you're still under threat moving forward, or do you feel you have the full support that you need now to properly take care of baby MJ as you see fit? Oh, I definitely feel I have the full support now, definitely. Excellent. Excellent. Now, Cheryl, what advice would you give to those parents? Um, now, we understand lawyer, of course, you need a lawyer, but what else do you need that are integral parts of building a fast case like this and being able to properly defend yourself in the eyes of the public or in the court of public opinion, basically? Well, as, as uh, was just mentioned, families go through a lot of stress and a lot of times in a case uh, that involves the Ministry of Social Services as well as hospitals and nurses, Everybody has an opinion, and the problem is that when everybody's voicing their opinion on a family going through such an extreme stress, it makes it very hard for the family to take all the information and to go and make their own judgments without them being uh, uh, put under duress in, in order to make a decision that they may not have made. Mm -hmm. or allow them the freedom of having the uh, opportunity to choose their own opinion for their child. So I feel that it is extremely important that um, parents find that neutral person, somebody who can, uh, it, it can be of multiple people, um, families including like uh, extended families, they're all very highly emotionally involved so you need someone that can kind of help you maneuver through that because there is a lot and there's a lot on parents and I feel that uh, in some ways our, our ministries and stuff even though they say they're out to help it is it, it becomes very intimidating for families so families really need to uh, look for someone who it, it, an organization or, or other people that can help them with that that third person to help them make those maneuvers and help with the communication. So the, av the advocate. Yeah, basically. the advocate. You really need it because you're under stress, and the doctors know it, the social workers know it. It's not your your proper voice isn't heard as strongly in the right way, and that's why you you really do need to get an advocate Absolutely. first thing. Absolutely, and that's what we've learned here and to some of our activists that jumped on this and helped us with it. Again, this is how we learn and we grow together, is just learning how sensitive issues can be dealt with in, a, in an appropriate way. And, um, and then there's ways to deal with the ministry, for instance, when they get involved because they have so much power that you have to understand there's nothing we can do with signs and, and debating with their power. You can only get a lawyer and hope that the justice will step in in family law. That's what's important to understand. I think that was what was exercised here. And again, there was a positive results. So um, now so with, the, with, the, with the stress, yes. sorry, Chad? That's another question. I think I'm just a little in the dark about this. And I was kind of trying to get there earlier about it. But uh, how, so how did the lawyers come into play with all this? They, they tried to take, who was it that made the call to take the baby off of life support? The ministry. The ministry did? Yes. Yes. And, and so after the hospital is willing to work with you with the CBD and all this stuff, the ministry just stepped in and overrode them as well? Yep. The ministry, uh, from, my understand, from my understanding, the ministry had the final call and was the one that had asked uh, for baby MJ to be taken off the life support and moved to hospice. Um, not it, this, this was not a decision the parents 
were able to make that would have not been under duress when um, when we got involved uh, yesterday when we started this. Um, I noted that the the parents did not have that third advocate person for them. So there was a lot, they're not being heard. The ministry was very much decided that this is what we're going to do. And the parents were completely left out of that. And they're the natural parents. There's no reason why they, that would be that, you know, this is their child's life. So. People need to really look at this yeah. because the, the ministry is just a bureaucracy. They have nothing to do with health. They don't know about health. They're not trained in it. They don't know nothing. It's a bureaucracy that says you must go by these standards because this is what we put in place. That's all they are. And then they stepped in and overrode a doctor that has told you guys to give this this baby CBD and is, is seeming to work and all this and is overriding them for, for procedure. These are bureaucrats getting in the middle of our, our health and telling us that we just, oh, we should just lay down and die because of their the regulations basically well it's important too. I mean the, the ministry is out to protect children and uh, that's child protection and there's children that need protection and if they could prove cannabis was somehow dangerous to a child again that's why this whole child proof containers and everything doesn't make sense to me because there is no lethal death dose that's unfortunate if a child has a bad trip and there is stuff that needs to be studied in this case you're talking about a baby and the issue of CBD oil but as Dr. Sanjay Gupta showed, as the brothers showed over in America, CBD or oil in general with high CBD concentrates, uh, oil in general will stop seizures. And they've done this with lots of children. And that's what Dr. Sanjay Gupta was talking about. Canadians continue to try to be railroaded by Mr. Harper in the campaign to hate marijuana. I don't even like calling it marijuana. It's cannabis. And it's proven to save children's lives. And this is where you don't put politics, uh, activism if you have it, or try to put a spotlight onto something like this that's a very touchy, serious issue around endocannabinoids, children, custodial rights, and Ministry of Children and Family. That's why you don't get involved until there's a lawyer, if you truly want to represent those parents and that child. On that note, one of my friends actually there's is just here now. There's a lot of people out there that can't afford a lawyer too, Jay. So, you know, what do we say to those, those young, young people out there that have are going through this situation old people older people whoever out there that you know just can't see can't even afford a lawyer and is going through the same situation it doesn't know who to reach out to well that's just it that's why I was that was what I was hinting at because Justin and his wife are both on disability and uh, they certainly couldn't afford a lawyer and we were able to pull this off because we know how to go through legal loopholes and how to properly protect children and at what point to engage a lawyer again there's a certain time that you can engage them and get covered and there's a time you can't and knowing this stuff and going through experienced advocates is what matters. And not taking just, oh, it's a cannabis issue, it's a cannabis issue. No, it's not. It's a parental rights issue. And it's a right to autonomy issue. No matter what the drug is, I don't care if it was tea that he wanted to give his baby. If he felt the tea was going to help the child, that's his right. That's all it is. It's a matter of me being a father, too. If my child was sick, I want a right. I don't want anybody interfering with that right. You know? I often wonder if the ministry can't be sued for some of this. You know, potentially trying to force you to, you know, allow your child to, to pass away is something I just can't get my head around. But I'm glad, once again, the justice has stepped in and uh, you guys have stood your ground. So, um, yeah, are there any other questions from the audience? I mean, I'm amazed that there isn't more questions because it's such a sensitive issue here. Uh, is there anything else that you wanted to cover, um, Justin, on this topic? Because there's going to be a lot of blogs that get a lot of follow-up uh, arising from this. And a lot of other parents are going to want to know, what do we do? I say contact a, uh, an organization that you have that has contacts with people that can help you in relation to kids. And there are networks across Canada. And there are underground networks that are continuing to supply these families. And they'll continue to be here no matter what. That's what you need to understand. Know who you're contacting and you'll get the right help. If you're truly trying to help your child, we'll truly be there to help you. Justin? I, I think that if you're in a situation where your child needs cannabis and you're not potentially sure what to do, get all the information you can get to give it to your doctor, approach your doctor, you might be surprised, your doctor might be pro-cannabis and you might not even realize it, it might be a lot easier than you think. Uh, the doctor might be open to education and it would be, it would probably make your transition with the, the medical marijuana a lot easier. Absolutely, now has, have you sought a section 56 to for baby MJ to just 
exempt yourself and any, any further problems with persecution? Yes, I did. Excellent. And the doctors are supportive of that, of course? Yes, correct. Fabulous. There's another thing you do is understand what to ask for, what to go for, to once again protect, your, protect yourself holistically in relation to stuff like this. And it's for nobody else. And I can't emphasize this enough, nobody should intervene and try and tell parents what to do. Even now, we don't try to advise them. We say get a lawyer because the ministry is powerful. Nobody should try to advise you at that time. The lawyer gets involved, kicks the ministries, but they can say, yeah, let's put a spotlight on this. Let's talk about what they did. But let's not talk about anything else other than what they did and forward-looking what other parents can do so that that doesn't have to happen again. Unfortunately, a lot of the time, parents do lose their kids, as we've seen on the East Coast with baby Aiden. They lose their children for exploring options of cannabis. And meanwhile, the LPs say, well, we want to do all this stuff with medical. And at the end of the day, doctors are the gatekeeper. It's not a medicine in Canada, and it's not in pharmacopoeia for them to reference and prescribe for a baby. So it puts everybody in an awkward position. So at the end of the day, step away from the medical right to autonomy and allow parents to do it their way. Chad? Yeah, man, exactly. Just, you know, I, I think we just need all these bureaucracies to get out of our way and let people raise their kids the way they not they need to raise them, you know? I mean, it's uh, it's a sad thing when you're trying to bring a natural plant into your, your, your child's, you know, hospital room when they're, they're on life support and, uh, and some bureaucracy decides to just move in on you and tell you that, that, that you can't do that. This is a sad, it's a sad state of affairs and situations like this that occur and then are put in the limelight like this and you know you guys step up and, and speak about this the more people actually speak about this the less it's actually going to be able to happen so that's the way i think we just have to just keep speaking out and just you know pointing our fingers at these bureaucracies and these people that really don't give it they don't care about our, our well-being they they just care about the bottom line and they care about you know this ego trip that they're on oh i'm right I'm right because I have a bureaucracy and you're going to have to follow me. And, you know, we need to just, we need to realize that a lot of these people are just arrogant. They really are. And, and you know, it, it, we just have to, uh, have to keep going, keep waking people up to it and just, you know, be there for one another. That's all we can do. And this is another good question from the audience now. I think we need to look at this. And this is a question I actually it was running across my own mind. Um, with the impact on dispensaries from the, the Central Plains, Macros, and uh, you know, Mr. Glenn Price being shut down as well, um, displacing patients, what will happen if Vancouver boxes up the 94 clubs we have and turn it in to the 25 clubs that they would like to do? How is that going to impact someone like yourself trying to access CBD oil for your child? Oh, it's going to make it next to impossible. It's pretty hard to find as it is. I mean, it's not hard to find, but it's not easy to get the lab tested stuff that's the, 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 the only safest method of giving to a child. And if they're going to box that down to 25, that's going to take your one or two chains that do have that, and they might not, they might not exist under those 25. Yeah. And where are you going to go? You're going to have to go to the streets, and that's not an option. And that's just it. I've often said that the case in Hitzig, again, a, a very historic case, the judge said medical patients should not have to rely on corner street drug dealers, nor should parents dealing with a critical situation like this. That's why, thank God, you're in BC and that you're able to get that help. And uh, speaking of which, even now, again, with or without dispensaries, I can speak for the underground that there's going to be, and there always is, you know, and there always has been, a market and an underground network that goes from coast to coast that will supply those parents and supply those people and those mom and pop operations whether they're above ground or on a telephone which should be actually you know the above ground people you know they, they should these people that are out there helping people out there all over the place underground you know they it's time for them to come above and it's, you know, these are the people that should be growing cannabis and helping people because they care about their communities. And they've been doing it. They've proven to be doing it and, and to, proven to help, to want to, to wanna help. You know, uh, we, we, give, we give these licenses to these, again, another bunch of bureaucrats that don't care about us. They don't care about anybody but the bottom line. They, that's all they care about. And, it, you know, it's got to stop. It's got to stop. Justin, here's a question from the audience for you now. Now, Health Minister Rosa, Rowan Ambrose has come out and um, said there's, she's outraged at the Supreme Court of, of Canada. There's no medical value to marijuana, blah, blah, blah. After what you just went through, 
What's your message now to the Health Minister of Canada? Well, I have to laugh at you because my personal experience alone, as well as my daughter's experience, I've been using it to, to, to treat my back pain. I've used it to treat anxiety. I've used it to save my daughter's life. Can't just say, and my wife has been almost two years seizure free. You, can, you can't just say, well, that's not medicine. Exactly. And the other thing that's ironic too, and that Rona, this is what is shame about this, is that while she screams about no medical value, everybody has to remember Rona was okay, the health minister was okay with licensed producers coming in that still can't supply patients in Canada, let alone parents, with this critical oil at critical times like this. And here we have the state trying to interfere, and we have a monopoly in this country that's failing the cannabis culture. And again, this comes ties right into the boxing up of clubs and uh, everything else that is very concerning. Um, it, it's very concerning for me. It's very concerning for other parents. And uh, I guess the real, the real big question here is um, going into an election year, what can we do better as a cannabis culture to do better awareness campaigns such as the Haley Rose Foundation? What can you do better, Justin, with your wife to keep a spotlight on this? To let people understand that this is important and that parents have rights. I'm so tired of seeing the state, the Ministry of Children and Families here, the Children's Aid Society in Ontario, stomping and tromping on parents' rights and executing, you know, their authority that really they don't have if you can actually have the money to fight it. And Chad brought up a good point. People can't afford it. That's why the Cannabis Rights Coalition was formatted, you know, was built. It was built to save gardens initially. Now it's expanded its mandate to help in advocacy in any way possible because we have thousands of people collectively working together for free. And they're willing to take on this, this particular issue because this is a historic time for Canada. Again, what are you going to change things? You know, we can't all just allow one person or another person to take those hits and then, you know, try to fight it out on their own. We all have to come together on this. This is the time, and we all have to come together. One person gets taken down, all of us get behind them. And this is what we have to do to bring this thing forward. We really need people to start looking towards the cannabis growers of Canada also that want to have testing. That, that ha If you think you have a, a specific you know, strain or something that's wonderful out there and you want to get it tested, contact us. Let's get some tests done. Let's, let's, let's get people knowing where these products are and where, where to get them. Um, I really think that that's something we really need to do is just all of us come together. There's people out there all over the place that have amazing genetics everywhere. And they just don't even know how to really help everybody. And people that are looking for that help don't know how to reach out to them. So we all just need to come together. I believe the Cannabis Growers of Canada can help, help us with that. And, you know, we can just build, build this thing the way it should, should be. Okay, um, Cheryl, do you have uh, any, uh, before we just close out, was there any closing remarks or anything that you guys want to do or anything else that we should be touching on here? Uh, we'll talk a bit about where to find Haley Rose Foundation and, and other stuff like that. But right now, what else can we talk about here? What other message can we give to the audience? People are going to watch this over the next few days. People are going to say, well, it's controversial. You know, the, what do we have it to is, say? but we can't stop talking about it. It is. We cannot stop talking about it. And if you are in a situation... Call, find an advocate. Call. There are people who will, as you've seen, there are people that will find you that help just to get you. Because parents who are in situations like this, they're under a lot of stress and they need that help. They, it puts them, when, they're, when your child is in very sick, my, I've been through this with my own, um, you really need that advocate's help because it's very important that and a lawyer yeah. but for sure exactly you, ha you have those weak moments you know especially yeah. as a as a parent and you're dealing with so much stress and you, you're starting to wonder am, am i just being you know paranoid or overbearing because it's my kid and, and no you need somebody there to reassure you and say no you're, you're not being paranoid or overbearing i would do the same for mine and and to reassure you you really do need those advocates out there to, to stand with you i, I agree yeah, and what I went through myself with my own child, once again, it's, uh, I could never imagine if she was sick and somebody tried to tell me how to handle it. Even now, I don't like somebody trying to tell me how I should or shouldn't do something with my child. And I think any parent has a right to that, provided you're not harming your child. And that comes right back to the essence of this issue, that whether it's an infant or whether it's, it's an adult or whether it's a child, um, you know, a teenager, if they need this treatment and it's going to help them, nobody should arbitrarily get involved unless there's a danger. 
and cannabis has not presented a danger, not growing it, not using it. No, it's, there's no danger factor to cannabis. And that's one of the biggest things I think we need to educate on. And that was well said, Cheryl, uh, in how to get make sure that you get involved in this and understand not to be quiet. The one thing the ministry counts on is the minute that they get involved, they threaten you and they count that you're going to be quiet. They bet on that. And the minute you do, you end up losing your, cannabis, your, your parental rights as a result of simply wanting to explore cannabis, as we've seen with Marco back east and other parents who have lost it simply for using cannabis. And they're just, they're not even giving it to their kids, but they were actually smoking it in the house and the ministry worker happened to smell it or see it, whatever, and they've lost their kids because they didn't have the money, they didn't have the lawyer or the contacts to fight back. And That's, they're using a natural herb that's been here forever, that grows out of the ground, that God created. And these people think they have a right to do something against them. It, it's sad. Yeah, and that's why the Cannabis Rights Coalition once again uh, founded itself and, uh, and, and decided to expand its mandate to continue to help people uh, in a host of different ways because cannabis rights are constantly being infringed for medical patients and the crossfire of prohibition. It's continuing to happen as the monopoly ushers in uh, their, their version of what they want for legalization. And that's where you have all of these different uh, licensed producers. There's 24 of them, but there's 1,200 that think they're going to get in. And these 24 licensed producers are the ones that also want to control, and there's going to be about 50 of them by this time next year. They're going to want to control Canada. And that's the biggest issue. And it comes all the way down to supply and distribution here on the ground. It comes down to all the issues that are core to Canada. Now, if they can set these companies up, $25 million companies, under the premise of medical, while the health minister of Canada says there's no medical value, I think Joe Average Canadian should say, what's going on here? When good people like um, Aaron from Macros is going to jail, Mr. Price is having to spend a night in jail, these people are getting arrested for helping parents and patients as patient providers. Where do we draw the line and say enough is enough in our society, a democratic and free society? Where do we say enough is enough? I know, man. I know. It's not like anybody's selling nuclear weapons or something dangerous i tell you it's like it's really pathetic and sad it's just it's a plant i i don't know how to i just don't know how to get through to, to the average person out there that is so brainwashed by the propaganda of this thing but my god if you can't just look around and see every other plant out there and then put it in the same category and say wow it's just another plant that was given to us I, you, you've been you've been duped you got to get your head out of your you know what and Stop listening to all the propaganda. Absolutely. Um, I wanted, speaking of uh, that, I just kind of wanted to throw out this little fact. You know how uh, a lot of people talk about overdosing on cannabis? You've just, basically, you've eaten too much. If you take a half a teaspoon to a quarter, te or a half teaspoon to a full teaspoon of decarboxylated CBD product, you will bring that paranoia that horrible feeling down and it will go away so in the hospitals instead of you know i apparently i don't know but apparently they s set people in a chair and just tell them to ride it up give them give them some cbd in about 30 to 50 minutes they'll feel well medicated but all those negative effects will be gone and they can go on with their life that's it it's all it is when they talk about oh our children well there needs when when they talk about children getting candies and the edibles and things well that's the same as a parent needs to take responsibility and that's where as parents we need to be responsible for our children but in instances where anyone or at uh, different events or whatever when people find that that's all you have to do it will bring it right down all this whole blue about uh, overdosing is just absolutely not true and that's well, it's, a quick it's reefer, fix. It's reefer madness 2015. Yeah, it, it totally yeah, is. And, to well, happen. it's hilarious that they'll set, they'll tell you your kid can overdose from it and all this stuff. But meanwhile, like, like myself, you know, for instance, when I was a kid, they tried to prescribe to me, uh, um, uh, Ritalin. Yeah. So I mean, Ritalin is speed. You can overdose on Ritalin. You can definitely die. And I mean, it, it's damaging your brain just by by using it. Like normally, you know, it, it's it's an amphetamine. It shrinks your brain, your your brain growth. Um, so, you know, they'll give this to kids, and this is prescribed to kids. And 
they could easily just kill themselves on it. But you can't kill you, kill yourself on cannabis. You know, I mean, everybody's you know uh, medicine cabinet has their prescription drugs, all kinds of different things that somebody could just down a bottle and they're gone. And really, all it is is a childproof cap. That all you, you just have to have a little bit of pressure, push down. There you go. That's it. There's no there's no vaults. There's no you know giant fencing. There's none of this crazy stuff that they're telling us we need for cannabis that can't hurt anybody. Well, I often say, let's just look at statistics for the past 70 years or 80 years, whatever it's been, 90 years of reefer madness, all this time people have been using cannabis. They estimate there's a million medical cannabis users in Canada. Well, where the hell are all the deaths or toxicities or reports to the hospital that would warrant this sort of hype? about edibles being dangerous. They're no more dangerous than, you know, the people that makes a bake sale and goes down and uh, sells something at, at a farmer's market. You know, those baked edibles are no different. You know, if you can grow it and, it, and it's, it's not gonna hurt anybody, if it's a harmless medicine, again, it should not be policed like a gun. Again, we can talk about this going on and on. I wanna give a big thanks right now tonight um, to a special, to Hempel, uh, for coming down with the oils um, and making sure that, um, that uh, Justin and his wife and uh, and baby MJ are looked after and uh, and uh, properly taken care of, and we can feel better here at Cannabis in Canada and with the coalition, knowing that this is kind of a closed case for us, other than allowing the court process to go through um, the proper means and allowing proper advocates to take over as we continue to report on anything breaking. If the ministry chooses to get aggressive, we'll be there to report on it. You know, we want to make sure that they know there's a spotlight and the doctors know that there's a lot of support. And there are activists across this country that will continue to stand up for patient rights, for children, and for cannabis rights in this country. On that note, this is Jason Wilcox. I want to thank Chad Jacket, my co-host, for being on tonight. Um, thank you, Justin uh, Pierce, you. for coming on the show. Cheryl T. Rose, as always, thank you for coming on and being a wonderful advocate in this. And once again, shout out to all the coalition activists, to Von Millen, to Jen Bennett, um, <laughs> geez, to Josh. Um, uh, Ecker, all the different people who really took a hard stand, worked fast and diligently on this case, to Michael DeSant Jensen. There are a lot of people that jumped on this and took time out of their day to make things happen in a real short period of time. For that, we thank you all. Thank you for the wonderful stuff you guys have done. Stay thank tuned you. for Cannabis in Canada for more breaking news and for more as we continue to cover the monopoly agenda in Canada and how it impacts patients here on the ground and, in this case, children. We'll see you Thanks next show. Thanks again for being so outspoken on this issue again, Justin. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, also, if you guys are trying to get a hold of me for any more questions, you can find my Facebook on the fundraising page. Thank you. Okay, and Cheryl, quickly, where can you find uh, Haley Rose Foundation? You can find us on Facebook at the Haley Rose Foundation, H-A-Y-L-E-Y Rose Foundation, um, or you can find me under Cheryl T. Rose as well on Facebook. Um, Awesome. Okay, so stay tuned for more of CannabisCanada.ca. Cheers. See you guys. Thank you too, Cheryl. Oh, no problem. Thank you.